This is the second day of the four days meditation retreat with you all and I'm very glad that you had some instructions on meditation yesterday and some sessions of practice as well and today we will discuss more about meditation and we will take more time to practice that's the plan and before we sit for meditation we will assume that our heart is like a lotus which has thousands of petals so our heart our mind is just a lotus which has thousands of petals and this lotus gets the sunlight early in the morning and it starts blooming a little by little so now it starts blooming and we never notice the movement of the blooming and we know that the outer petals that you can see when the lotus is closed like this those outer petals are dirty and not smooth they are just like very rough petals but as the lotus opens you will see beautiful very smooth and fragrance full petals and you will also see the uh, you know you will feel the fragrance coming out you will smell it you will sense it so our mind is like a lotus which has thousands of petals that will take time to open up with the light of wisdom so light of wisdom is the one that awakens the thousand petaled lotus so we have to let it open like the sun doesn't come all of a sudden and open the lotus lotus flower right this is just a natural flower that it stays like this early in the morning and with time you see it will take at least 10 uh, three four hours to see the full blossomed flower until then you will have to wait and see how it happens but the theory is the petals outside of the lotus are not smooth not beautiful there is no fragrance with them and you don't want to touch them it's they are like not as smooth as the ones inside okay but if you want to see the beautiful fragranceful and smooth petals you will let the flower to open and wait how it opens up and it will be like this when it is full fully blossomed in your heart in your mind you have the similar similar pattern similar you know ways of opening when you have the dhamma when you have the wisdom the heart starts opening the Buddha has said Pabhasara Midang Bhikkave Chittang Chittang is the mind Pabhasara Idang Idang means this one Pabhasara means illuminating it's not dirty it's just a light so the mind is like that but now because of five hindrances because of the busy nature of the mind it's not opening up it's full of dirty stuff the outer surface of the mind you will have to move here into the middle if you want to see me doing things (coughs) 
the mind will take time to open up after clearing the dirty stuff. So that's what we are doing in meditation. That is one example. The other one is just think of the Siba garden which has many flower plantations and weeds. Weeds are the ones that we pull out and remove to keep the plants that we want. The mind is the same. It just has all the dirty plants that we will have to uh, pull out and let them die. But the rest we will keep. Kusala dhammas, kusala chittas, we will cultivate. That is the right effort. You know, right effort has, explain, has been explained in four ways. You let arise the wholesome nature of the mind. You subdue the unwholesome nature. All, all, already arisen wholesome uh, nature, you will let it grow. And if any unwholesome dhammas have arisen, you will try to you know, remove them. You will, not really trying, but you will make the conditions, causes and conditions to let them disappear. This is right effort. So, keeping the plants that you want in your mind and pulling out the weeds is the duty of meditation. Weeds are the plants that are not beautiful, um, that change the color when it is too sunny. So you will rather keep the beautiful ones and pull out those weeds that are not beautiful. Any questions so far? No. So since you all are fresh now, we will sit in a sit for some time, very short time. And today I, I brought my meditation bell and we also have this little one. Uh, we can use it uh, every now and then and we will continue on with meditation. Please close your eyes and uh, relax. Take a deep breath and uh, release. Keep releasing your tightness of the body. So please understand the mind garden. It is a garden that has weeds and good plantations. And we will just see what happens in the mind right now. You will slowly move to your previous meditation experience, which is breathing in, breathing out, and relaxing your body and feeling the breath in, in your whole body plus observing whether the breath is long or short.
please keep your smile on the face while breathing in, breathing out and observing whether your breath is short or long and relaxing your body and experiencing the breath in your entire body. If you feel any sensation, you will observe whether they are pleasant feelings, painful feelings or neither painful nor pleasant feelings, maybe neutral. Please be aware of your feelings while you are doing your breathing meditation. Breathing has to happen naturally.
if you want to move your legs please do so if you feel numb feelings you you don't have to resist this you can just mindfully release your body and if you want to walk go ahead and walk and come back to your cushion uh, with a relaxed body open your eyes and uh, did you feel some expansion of your body something like that what did you feel <clears throat> anyway we will do some walking meditation and come back to your cushion Okay. Now think that you are dreaming, okay? In this dream you are walking into a forest. You go into a forest and you see a forest pool, a big pool. Uh, there's a big huge lake and you see a big tree sitting next to the lake and you want to sit under under that tree and this is the evening time and you sit and you stay perfectly still you don't move your body no part of your body will be moving you just stay like the tree here and you see the lake and you feel the tree which is a gigantic tree but your eyes are open and when it gets darkened when the darkness is falling some animals are coming to the lake and you see them coming they check whether anything is moving if nothing is moving they are perfectly secured they feel okay and they go and they get into the water and they also look to look around and see if anything is moving that if there is no sound no other you know distractions those animals will drink water and suddenly leave but you are sitting next to them under this tree and the animals never saw you but you never move even after they left you stay still and you start relaxing more and more and then those other big animals those who you will never see in your life they start to come and drink water from the lake the big ones not the, not those small general animals like deers but tigers elephants and those are the big ones will also come to the lake to drink water and because you are not moving because you are not shaking any part of your body and because you are sitting just like a rock under the tree those animals feel secured and will come to the water and those animals are so relaxed and beautiful and you enjoy them seeing seeing them and you just let them do whatever they want and they will enjoy their 
lake session just drinking water and having fun in water and they will leave and this particular dream teach you a lesson the lesson is that if you are not moving if you are not trying to hold catch if you are not trying to catch anything if you are not trying to control anything you will start seeing beautiful things happening in your mind like like what beautiful things can be the experience of a samadhi samadhi means the four jhanas in the noble eightfold path the first jhana the second jhana the third jhana and the fourth and people think that these jhanas are impossible because the vipassana retreat centers sometimes teach these people to charm to be charmed and be absorbed in the jhana which people find it impossible but you don't have to be absorbed in the jhana like yesterday in our discussions we realized that jhanas are the ones that you even have thoughts in it you have thoughts in the first jhana vitakka means thoughts and in order to realize what jhana you are in you need to have some thoughts and we will read the jhana sections of one sutta this afternoon to realize how the four jhanas happen from a sutta from a real authentic sutta not like some suttas that were added later and these suttas that we will select will be very useful for you to learn what jhanas really are so if you are not trying to hold on to uh, any thought like probably a feeling of somebody will come to your mind some distracting images will pop up in your mind but you are not moving you are not trying to control them you are not trying to get rid of them but you are just sitting like a rock just like a tree so you will experience those distracting images stay there and will disappear you don't have to do anything just see them just be aware of them coming and leaving like those beautiful animals came maybe those other not beautiful animals came and they all came and enjoyed and they left some nice experiences in meditation are like that you see them coming and you cannot hold on to them if you try to keep that that beautiful experience they will not stay with you they feel shy and they go away so you should let them come and let them stay and let them go this is how your meditation happen so this experience is quite similar to any experience that any advanced meditator will have so now after a little discussion i will try to take every one of you individually and talk to you to see what you feel about meditation and where you have experienced deep states of your meditation or anything you have to talk because in general we shouldn't interview people in common because your experience will affect to the others and if he had a beautiful experience you want to have it too <laughs> and that becomes a distraction for your meditation <coughs> expecting brings you nowhere expecting good experiences will make no good experience to you in your meditation So the four words that I am picking from the Satipatthana Sutta at the very opening of the Satipatthana Sutta you will see very important four words what are they 
Many people never notice these words are that important. Even in Dhamma Chakka Pratana Sutta you have very, very important four words. But I will take the four words from the Satipatthana Sutta. You, before establishing mindfulness, you have to have these four qualities. The first one is Atapi. Atapi. Tapi kyanne tavima. Atapi kyanne tavima ta kapavela. E kyanne ardent kyanne gunaya. Keles tavime virreya. Atapi kyanne kyanne. Keles tavime virreya. The effort to overcome your kilesas, defilements, cankers. You need to have this quality before establishing mindfulness. And Sampajano, the word we discussed yesterday, we need to have this quality before establishing mindfulness. Sampajano means, I told you, Janati means just knowing, Pajanati means well knowing, Sampajanati means fully well knowing, full awareness. You need to have this quality. That means whatever happens in your process, if you feel any movement here, if you feel any other pain here, you are fully aware of them, but you are not fighting against with anything. You just see them coming and disappearing. Anything that arises will disappear. That's the law of the universe. Anicca. And the other quality is Atapi Sampajanos. What is the other one? Satima. You need to be mindful before establishing mindfulness. That means crazy people cannot do this. If you have some loss in your heart, you are not like Yesterday I was talking to this uh, very clever student from Matara. So we have a we have a very reputed, well reputed college, which is Matara Rahula College. And this particular student, known to me for so many years, comes from a very uh, he's the only child in the family and comes from a very you know well off family, very well educated family. And he is the best student of all the seven classes of all levels in his school. He is the best student. But recently he got A-level results. Quite disappointing that he got B, C and S for his results. He had, we all had high hopes that he will, he will you know, pass the exam in his first try. And... Uh, get into the medical college and his only wish is to become a lecturer in medical college, medical faculty in Peraldeni. But it didn't happen. But when he, when I spoke to him yesterday, what, you know what he first asked? He wanted to, he has been practicing Kasina meditation and he want to know why Kasina meditation does not happen, does not give him any good results anymore. He was taking a lamp light and being absorbed to in it and uh, can you go and see what is that big smoke down there? Maybe they, they are burning something but just to make sure we are safe. <laughs> so this boy could not uh, focus anymore in his uh, Kasina practice. Aloka Kasina, light Kasina is the one he practice but he couldn't do that. I first gave him an advice not to practice any meditation using books without having a teacher. <laughs> he has been asking me to practice meditation. I did not give him instructions because he was living somewhere and I was living somewhere. I could give instructions through Skype but I gave only general instructions. He is very clever. He knows every single thing of a car, every single thing of anything that he sees. He is a genius he's student, but he, could kn he knows also about meditation. The only problem is he is restless. He is not satima. 
he is not mindful enough to notice what happens in his process. Because of that, he cannot have blissful previous experience in meditation. Also of expecting. Expecting something has uh, resulted him this disappointment. Disappointment. Expecting good results plus expecting good, good experience in his casino meditation. So I told him the nature of impermanence and coming back to his normal life and relaxing and smiling. This is the first thing that he has to do. No meditation but relaxing and smiling and talking to his friends, talking to his relatives. On the first two days his mobile phone wasn't working, his parents kept his, their mobile phones switched off, his grandma did so, his uncles did that because they were all expecting something from him and he couldn't uh, fulfill their wish. Things never happen the way they want, but it gives, it teaches you a big lesson in your life. What is the big lesson? That we just have to expect that things never happen the way we want all the time. Things can be achieved later in, in, in your life. If you haven't failed any exam in your life, you need to fail one and feel how it feels like. Right? Yeah, you need to feel that. You are not going to be lucky every day. Lucky people are never lucky every day. Like, that's why if you go to any Olympic game, they are not going to play uh, towards the rest of their life. They stop somewhere when it is the golden time of their life. Look at all the cricketers, they, they come to the pinnacle of their life, of their success and they stop right there because they want to keep that dignity and the reputation. Because they know that if they try to, you know, go and play again and again, they will not be able to be the best anymore. They rather prefer to be the best now and stop. So, in meditation, you will be just a meditator, not anyone who is trying to achieve something. Just being mindful and then establishing that mindfulness. So, satima is a quality that you have to have before establishing mindfulness that you will find in the opening of the Satipatthana Sutta. What is the smoke? Kunu. Good. I felt like that building down there is burning off. <laughs> okay. And the other one is Vinaya Loke Abhijja Domanasa. Abhijja means, what is it? Covetousness. Udja means Adhyasya. You have Daddy Lobe in your mind. Yankisi Adhyasya, you know, like that boy who had, you know, high expectations, high Adhyasya. Abhi, abhi Adhyash, Abhi Dhamma means deep Dhamma, right? So Abhi Adhyash means Daddy Onekama, Daddy Lobe. You have this Abhijja, not Avidja. Avidja is ignorance. Abhijja means covetousness. You have this, this desire to achieve something. You need to buy a Lamborghini and you have that feeling in your mind and you are collecting money. And I know this one person who is buy, trying to buy a land pusher. Because of that, he even doesn't buy anything to eat because he wants to collect money and save it for, uh, for the land pusher. But I told him that if you collect money for five years, you will see a better vehicle than the land pusher and you will, you will need to collect more <laughs> from that point onward to buy that best vehicle. The land crusher's name will be gone with time. <laughs> so this is Abhijja, that you have the Daddy Adhyashe, the great uh, expectation, greatest wish on buying something. And the other one is Dhomanasa. Manasa, Manasa. Ma Manasa is your mind. Dhomanasa means like dislikeness of your mind. Restlessness and unpleasantness, not having any happiness in your mind. 
you try to get something and you didn't get it, so you feel uh, disappointed. This is Dhammanasa. You need Vinaya means you get rid of them. You just uh, tame your mind to stay away from this abhijja. If you have these great wishes, you better stay away from them. If you have disappointments of losing something, you better stay away from them before establishing mindfulness. Okay? Ida bhikkave bhikkhu kaya kaya nupasi viharati atapi sampajano satima vinaya loke abhijja domanasa. Vedana su Vedana Nupasi Viharati Atapi Sampajano Satima Vinaya Loki Abhija Dominasa. Chitte Chitta Nupasi Viharati Atapi Sampajano Satima Vinaya Loki Abhija Dominasa. Dhamme su Dhamma Nupasi Viharati Atapi Sampajano Satima Vinaya Loki Abhija Dominasa. What what does it mean? At the very opening of the sutta, the Buddha says, You have to be ardent, fully aware. Uh, mindful and restrained from uh, covetousness and grief before establishing mindfulness through the body and feelings and mind and mind objects. And the, the best advice for you from me is that these four steps of establishing mindfulness, the body, feelings, mind and mind objects, are not happening one after another. They are happening all at once. Because you are practicing on your breath. Breath is one of the six practices of your uh, bodily establishment of mindfulness. Kayanupassana of the Satipatthana Sutta has uh, six sections. And while you are practicing one of the six sections, I will teach you what are the six. While you are practicing one of the six, let's say it is your breathing practice that you are practicing, you feel sensations, pains, right? You have painful, pleasant feelings, painful feelings and neutral feelings. Don't you feel them? You do feel. So Vedana Nupasana has to start when you feel it right there. And you also feel your Raga Chitta, Saragamma Chitta, Saragam Chittanti Pajanati. While do, you are doing your breathing ex- meditation. So what you are supposed to do is to just be aware that this uh, Saraga Chitta is happening. Right? And this, it happens while you are doing your Vedana Nupasana. Maybe you also will feel your five aggregates. You will understand your six sense doors. You will understand the Nivaranas, five hindrances. And that is Dhamma Nupasana. It also happens while you are breathing. When some distractions happen, you know, you try to see how it happened. Not why it happened, but how it happened. And this is Dhamma Nupasana. So all the four are happening simultaneously. This is a great understanding in Satipatthana Sutta. Because many people think that all these four are happening one after another. You first have to do Kaya Nupasana and then you will do the Vedana Nupasana and then you will do the Dhamma Nupasana. No, Chitta Nupasana and then you will do the Dhamma Nupasana. It's not how it happens. You will, you will just understand how things happen perfectly and then sit in meditation. Okay, that's enough for now.